It has been a very long time since we've done an update video on the Arsenal, so today we're gonna do just that. Now, speaking of updates, I use my brain. Because it's been so long since I've touched the device, I've updated before we got in the field because I learned from my mistakes. Uh, two things worth mentioning before we get started. Number one, uh, as you know, I got the Arsenal Standard, and now that I check the website, it appears that they've discontinued this. So I guess we're already at a disadvantage. And as we left off, I was using a different camera, and I've moved a few times since, so I thought I lost the cord, and I ordered what I thought would be a replacement for that one, but it turns out because I'm running on the old Arsenal, which uses a USB micro, not a USB-C port, they sent me the wrong one, which, boo-hoo, I thought we weren't gonna film this video, but I was able to find the right cord, so we are in luck. My Lodo today is gonna be the Nikon D7000 tried and true, beautiful old camera with just standard, regular kit lenses. I'm also going to run an ND filter so maybe we can find a river and see what the arsenal would do with moving water situations. Maybe we'll run into some people that we can blur out too. I don't know. We'll see. The evening is our oyster, as they say. So, without further ado, let's get started. Cold water. Oh man, I gotta watch my step and two candles in my hand. Okay, so we're at our first location, which is running water. Now, I wanted to do this for a few reasons. Number one, I wanted to take a shot with a Nikon D7000, no filters attached, fully automatic mode, just to give us something to look at and compare the Arsenal to. Second shot will be the Arsenal, smart mode, no ND filter attached, and the last shot will be the Arsenal with a filter. First shot, no ND filter, fully automatic with the Nikon D7000. Pose our image, and I'll try to use the same composition each time. Just a quick squirrel brain rabbit hole. I'm also going to do a boot up test of the Arsenal just to give you an idea of the speed on this new device. So what you're about to see is a screen recording of the Arsenal booting up and connecting to the Nikon D7000 in real time. Ready, set, go. I'm booting up the Arsenal. It's already hardwired to the Nikon D7000. It's looking. Our watch that timestamps and we are connected in under 30 seconds. Now let's take our first shot. So yes, we are taking our very first shot of the evening with the Arsenal 2, and I'm surprised at how quick it was to connect. It's worth noting that it's running a bracket on smart mode, so I'm pretty intrigued to see how this turns out, actually. But now we are gonna throw on an ND filter and see how it handles water in a low light situation. All right, throwing on the filter. I'm just filming the talking segment right here in my car so I don't look like a freak talking to myself. So we are here at Anger Tower, which is a tourist hotspot for good reason. It's a beautiful place with a dynamic environment for us to work with. We have a landscape, a tower to focus on, and hopefully some good opportunities for macro photography. I feel like this is also an awesome time to try out Arsenal's crowd control because it is kind of busy here. It's also worth noting that the lenses that I'm using are nothing special. They're just cheap Japanese throwaway third party lenses from like the 1990s. So the deep color on the arsenal might come in handy. All right, to document this, we just ran into our first camera error. We're gonna give it another go. Same composition, see what happens. Oh, 
unspecified air. That is not good. Uh, this has potential to be a pretty dope shot because we got the moon and a ship. I'm doing my best to tighten the composition and triangulate it somehow. All right, so now we're gonna test our crowd control. There's a lot of people in the tower like whack-a-mole. So we're gonna see if we can make them disappear on the camera. So crowd control works for the most part. Uh, there's some people at the very top of the tower that it didn't take out just because they were just simply not moving enough. But I think uh, that's all the testing we'll do today. So we're going to go back to the house, offload our images, and talk about the Arsenal now. So some thoughts on the Arsenal now. I thought we were doing good making progress until I looked at my phone and realized that we missed almost half of our shots because the Arsenal failed. But luckily we have the raw files to work with in camera and I can post produce what I want to. So the Arsenal was about a hit and miss 50% of the time. I don't know the actual stats, but it's a frustrating amount. And especially if you want to use this for any kind of professional work, that's probably not an option. Not that you're probably doing that with the Arsenal or a device like it, but it just doesn't work enough or consistently enough. Seems like the more I use it, the less it wants to connect. Like I just wanted to review the pictures I got now and I, cannot connect back to the arsenal. And I'm sure it's because there's a lot of Wi-Fi interference in this building, but I didn't have this issue initially when I first booted up the arsenal, so I don't know what's different about it now. It's just a bit frustrating. But the thing with this device is there's just so many different variables from camera to arsenal and arsenal to phone and the lenses you're using that things just happen in between. And one person's experience with the device can be starkly different than another's. Like for instance, I'm using a decade old camera with old lenses and an Android system. Maybe you're using like a Canon EOS R with an iPhone Pro Max and everything works swimmingly. I don't know. I just thought the Arsenal would be best fitted on an older camera that might not have all those shiny features that a brand new system has. Like time lapses, panoramas. So again, if I were to cater the Arsenal to somebody, it'd be those with an older camera that want those features that they might not be able to get on their system. But it still doesn't really work. I mean, I saw some glimmer of hope when I first booted it up. It seemed to fire off pretty quickly. It ran the stacks and brackets relatively smoothly, at least some of the time. And it did what it was supposed to do Partly. <laughs> like the deep color looks like deep color. I'm not a huge fan of that punchiness. I would post produce a different way, but I'm not artificial intelligence. And some people like that. Most of the features are there. And again, who's to say if they work all of the time? I guess we'll go over a few more videos with the Arsenal, especially if there's a demand for it. But it boggles my mind that even today it's still this inconsistent. And I know I don't have the pro model. I didn't think they were going to abandon me with the standard, but I get it. The world's moving to USB-C and they probably just want you to buy their new product. So maybe we'll get the Arsenal Pro. I have a pretty bad taste in my mouth already with Arsenal. So please understand if I have my reservations, I want to stick with the standard here. Like speed wasn't an issue for me. It's consistency. Why can't you do what you say you're going to do? You know? <laughs> so uh, that's it for now. I hope you got something out of this video. Uh, we'll go over the arsenal again. Uh, sub to the channel for more content like this. And follow me on Instagram at Matt's Notes. Thank you. I will see you next time.